All right, guys, so tie down rails. What are they? Why have we done them the way we have? Are they standard? Stick around, we'll answer all your questions. All right guys, so in this video, we're gonna be doing a little explanation of how the tie down rails work and all the GCI Tracek trays, why we've done it the way we have. So going back to the very first design uh, a few years ago now, um, and then also showing different configurations of where to use them. So we are here in a paddock. We've got uh, a bit of stuff in the back here. We've got a few 35s, uh, bro them from the legends over at EC Off-Road. Um, also got some camping gear in the back, a jerry can, F here swag. So look, gonna show a few different ways to tie um, the stuff down in the back of our, uh, back of our trays. Um, obviously at the moment we've got it set up with the sideboards. Um, there's two ways to use it with the sideboards. You either go over the top of the sideboards or you tuck them in underneath the sideboards. So obviously you guys are going to notice this big white rag. That is there to protect the powder coat because the ratchet mechanism is pulling right on the, um, on the edge of that fold. So no matter what you have, no matter what coating you have, um, if you don't put a bit of a, a protection between the ratchet and the powder, it is gonna, or the, uh, the better aluminium, it is gonna wear away. So we do do that. Um, so always, yeah, keep a few rags in with your ratchet tie downs. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. Let's pull this stuff off and um, yeah, set it all up again. All right, so ratchet straps. Take that off. Always uh, tie up the loose ends when you, uh, when you have it. So these guys here, just dropped my clean rag, not ideal. This here is from Super Cheap Auto. It is a standard ratchet strap, which will go straight in to any of our tie down points. So it will literally go anywhere from the very front all the way around to the back. So this rail here runs all the way around the side of the tray. So no matter where you are, this just hooks in straight in. So um, obviously you can have the hooks. It is important when you do have the hooks, keep them in good condition. This plastic's uh, coating around the metal is gonna stop it from scratching the powder. As long as this is in nice condition, you're not gonna scratch all this up. But yeah, if this gets all jagged and whatnot, um, you will start scratching your powder, um, which we wanna try and avoid. So nice new ratchet straps. So as we said, they go all the way around. Take the tent, we'll grab that guy down, take your tension off, give it one click so it holds, and then grab your rag, slip it in behind there. If you are lucky enough to have a slightly uh, shorter ratchet, this ratcheting mechanism will be right in this little cutout and you won't need to worry about that rag. There's no problem with that sitting on the powder, it's gonna be fine. Um, so yeah, that's the over the top me method. Let's just take this off. All right, so the underneath method. So this one here is really um, important, I guess, for when your load isn't very high. So if you have a really tall stack of tires, obviously you wanna pull down on whatever's on the back. Otherwise, stuff's gonna fall off. It's not gonna be secure. You'll probably get done for an un unsecured load by the cops. So if it is down low, you need to be pulling from down low. So that's what we do here. So we still use our same um, tie down point. So it goes underneath the drop sides and then um, on around your, your rail there. So up through the, um, underneath the, the tie downs, or the drop side rather, and then yeah, up over everything else. So making sure, yeah, you go tall seam in the middle and then you spread it all out. So all this stuff here is pretty, uh, pretty secure. And then the same on the other side, it pops straight down over a compressor and then um, onto your tie down rail. So let's pull it all apart. Um, then I might even take the sides off and then show you how it all works without your drop sides. So again, probably first thing that's under the knot, crack your ratchet strap and then drop sides, come down, come down, and then your freezer be. That comes down and then you're off. So that there, you can see that all the way down there. Again, fully exposed tie down points, which also we have touched on previous videos, but your pivot points for the drop sides are integrated into your tie down rail. So it means there's no external latches. It also means you can take them off really easily wherever you are. You don't need any tools to take your drop sides off. So if you are having a really um, heavy load down low, it might be worth getting rid of your drop sides, taking them off, storing, it, storing them somewhere secure, and then going straight from your tie down point up over the tray to pull everything down. So if we wanted to do the same thing again, we could literally just hook it in there, take your slack up and start ratcheting away. And that way it's gonna be really, really secure. Um, again, if your ratchet straps are in good nick, you won't need to worry about putting anything in there. If they are a little bit ragged, a little bit used, a bit of wear and tear on them, 
probably best to put a cloth in there just to make sure your powder coat stays in the best condition it possibly can. So, drop size, we'll have to do this one first. This literally, yeah, comes down, they're the locks for it. And then the back one comes down. Because we've already got the other side down, I'm just gonna bring the, the rear one down first so it doesn't fall down by itself. And then what we've got is our drop side, and all we need to do is a little wiggle. Just ease off from the wiggle as you get towards the end. So you don't go bang. There we go, that's your drop side off. So that's what it looks like. Let's just pop it down over here. So this way we've got fully exposed your front lock. Just goes back up and it's there, lives there forever. Um, you can yeah, really utilize whole length of your tie down rail um, with everything on the back of it. So let's get into the reasons why. So it is a very different approach to everything else out there. Um, firstly, what we want it, well, back in the design phase, um, back in 2017, I think it was, um, basically we wanted to have a tie down rail which was integrated into the side of the tray. So obviously a lot of the other guys out there, you have your tie down rail much lower. Another negative of that is you do lose extra height here. So by well, integrating your tie down rail into the side of the tray, it compacts the side of the, uh, the tray to maximize, I guess, how high your headboard can be without it hanging over the roof too much. And then also making sure you have the right amount of uh, rear wheel clearance for, uh, for bump and suspension travel and whatnot. So also at the front of most of the other ones, you're gonna really struggle to get a, uh, a ratchet in there because you're fighting the mud guard here. It is the same point the whole way around. The next thing with the t integrated tie down rails was the drop sides pivot point integration. So it was really, uh, well, we were really keen to make it happen and find a way which we can have all the pivot points built in so they're always there. It means you can option drop sides after the point of sale. You don't have to buy your drop sides with your, uh, your tray or tray and canopy set up. So we do have a lot of people that don't think they're ever gonna take the canopy off, but because all of our systems here at GSI Trade Tech are lift off, we've got a few people have come back to us going, hey, can I actually grab those drop sides? I wanna take my canopy off and I wanna drive around as a ute. So we can send them out to you wherever you are. They do slide on. Basically, what you do, you just put them all up. We send them a little bit loose and then you put them all up, lock them all together, and then you just tighten the bolts and it sort of self-aligns. All right, so at the back of the tray, um, what we might actually do, we might point out what car this is. It is our D-Max. Um, let's just take that up for a sec. As you can see, since the last video we did on it, it is done, it is completed, it is working, it is really good, I'm super happy with it. So Neil Smith, thanks for asking in the comments how we're going with it. Have a look and let us know what you think. Um, so the radar system worked as per factory, which is really, really exciting. So anyway, tie down rails. Um, at the back, they, these extrusion rails go all the way around to the very back of it. So it means that you can tie things down to the very back of your tray. You're not limited to just the side. The other last thing you can do with tie down uh, straps is use the canopy points. So what these are in here, these are the strongest points you're gonna find to tie anything down. So what that is, it's a nut set. So think of a pop rivet with a thread on the inside of it. We have a special gun, we put it in the laser cut hole, which is a structural member. So to rip this corner out of your tray, you'll need to exceed five and a half ton, and it's gonna rip the whole corner out. It means your canopy, which usually bolts this point, is not going anywhere. So you can thread an M12 eyelet into that hole and then use that as another tie down point. So we have two at the back, and then one at the very front. So as I said, these are what usually mounts our canopies, but you can utilize them for tie down points when you're just running a tray. We've actually developed this extrusion to be able to be cut on our rotor machine. So it's one of two in Australia. Basically the extrusion we designed is so close to the absolute max of the machine's capabilities. When you're cutting it, you gotta think about this too. So imagine the extrusion rotating like this, and I've got a laser cutting head. All right, so we're rotating, we're going in and out, and then this head is going every single way it needs to to make sure it cuts this absolutely 0.1 millimeter perfect. So you can imagine as this is coming around, the head of that laser gets so close to extrusion and then it rotates around. I'm sure Anton will put a little grab of the actual laser machine um, in operation because it is really, really cool to see. All right, so how strong are the tie down rails? What we say, we recommend sticking to 150 kilo per tie down point. So basically what you need to 
understand is 150 kilo in a dynamic load is a lot more than just a static 150 kilo. So if you're doing a larger load than that, make sure you use multiple ratchet straps because you're gonna be crazy to put that much weight through a single strap because it's a latching capacity on a strap. It's not how much the strap can actually handle. So be really careful when you are tying stuff down to the back of your tray. No matter what tray you've got, make sure you have enough straps tie down to enough different points to make sure that load is distributed throughout the whole tray and you're not going to have any issues. All right guys, so that is a little insight into the uh, the workings of our tie down rails, the reasons why we did it and just answering a lot of questions that we do get hit up with quite regularly. So look, thanks for watching this far. What we are going to do as usual now is send it over to Tom. Tom's going to do a few Q&As of all your comments in YouTube. So look, if you are watching this far and you are interested in anything to do with GCI Tradetech, make sure you comment. And uh, yeah, look, if you're the lucky one, we pick out to read and answer on, uh, on the next video, so be it. So look, thanks guys, cheers. So it's time to answer your queries from the last couple of weeks. Um, go into a question that we had on YouTube from Pavel Pazowski. Um, is it possible for you to show the rooftop tent and the solar panel on the canopy? What does it look like together? I'm curious how you handle it. Um, yeah, we definitely can next time we have uh, an opportunity um, when we're shooting a video to show you how that works. With the rooftop tents that we use, we use the James Baroud. Now they're built first and foremost to be lightweight. So they're actually not built to put the solar panel on top of the, uh, on top of the uh, tent. So what we do in that instance is we'd normally mount that to your cabin roof rack instead so you get the best of both worlds. Some tents are built to have a solar panel on top. We don't supply or fit those, but what we can do is we can give you your solar panel separately so that you can fit that when you fit the rooftop tent, no problem at all. And we'll definitely uh, do a video on that next time we have a chance. So another question we get asked loads, um, not specific to YouTube, but through YouTube and all our, our digital channels, um, can you do an install local to me? Well, yes we can in a lot of places now. So we now have installers and distribution centers in Newcastle, in Melbourne, and also in Perth. So if you're local to any of those areas, um, then we can build everything for you here. Same GCI tray tech quality that you'd get if you were coming into Queensland for an install. But then we'll, after building it, we'll palletize it, we'll ship it down, and then you can have it installed locally. So if you've got issues through COVID not being able to get here, or if you're, certainly if you're from Perth, if you just don't fancy the drive, then uh, yes, you can have a local install done. Uh, so do um, ask us about that. <laughs> Is that you? So once again, if you've made it all the way to the end, uh, this week's question, uh, we want to know in your dream build, what would you go for? Would you have a full length canopy and get all that storage space inside? Or would you go for a shorty style canopy, maybe a half or three quarter, giving you the inside space and some usable tray space on the back? Really looking forward to hearing what you think. Uh, thanks so much for watching this week's video again, guys, and we'll see you again the next time.